If you thought ChatGPT was good, wait until you see this one. GPT-4 may be the most hype model that we've ever seen, with tons of rumors and news even before the model came out, and it wasn't for nothing. If you want a short TLDR, GPT-4 is ChatGPT's big brother. The OpenAI team has worked on improving the little brother since its release on November 2022, thanks to the feedback of millions of users, including you and me. They argue that the newly published model has better problem-solving abilities and a broader general knowledge, which makes it the best language model to date and by far. There is even more. It's better than 90% of lawyers on the bar exam. It can even help you with your taxes if you are willing to share all your information with it. Now is the time to be scared. If you haven't tried it yet, I think you should pause this and go play with it right now. You'll be amazed. The link is in the description below. But don't forget to come back, what's coming is the most interesting part. Let's dive into how the OpenAI team could make their ChatGPT model even better at everything. What changes did they make? With what data did they train it? And how did they train it? Here are the answers to all of those questions. Of course, based on what we have access to. First, what do I mean by having a broader general knowledge? This means multiple things. The first meaning is obviously that the model is just more knowledgeable, but it's also more creative. GPT-4 is better at discussing in a human way and iterating within a discussion with a user. It's also better at lots of different tasks people tried to use ChatGPT for, like composing music or assimilating someone's writing style, which makes the model even more powerful, or more dangerous depending on how you see it. It can also work with longer text than ever before. GPT-4 can handle more than 25,000 words of text. This means it can easily handle around a 100 page book or 14 times this current episode. Asking it to summarize an article is no longer a challenge. Be ready to see a flood of AI-generated summaries of books, podcasts, and movies in the upcoming days and weeks. You can easily send it your favorite podcast, like mine, or meeting transcripts if you want easy summaries. It should work like a charm. Try it with this episode and let me know if it got it right. Now, even better is that GPT-4 understands images. Yes, you can upload images and it can help you generate captions, produce analysis, or even classify them. You don't even need to build a specific AI to classify an image anymore. It just replaced my whole master's thesis work. Something both extremely cool and scary. Yep, just use GPT-4 for everything. This is where we seem to be going. Does this scare you or excite you more? I couldn't say for myself. It's definitely a blend of both, but I'm still optimistic about the progress and usage of those models. We'll also dive deeper into the ethical problems and considerations in an upcoming episode of my podcast if this is a topic you are into. Understanding images is a big reason why GPT-4 is much more capable. It has another way of seeing the world. And last but not least, GPT-4 has much better reasoning abilities than ChatGPT. We've all seen failure cases where ChatGPT's answers wouldn't make sense, especially with math or numbers. Well, they made lots of improvements to this new model. Go challenge it and let me know where it fails. I hope it is indeed much, much better. GPT-4 is not only more powerful, but it's also safer to use. Something cool is that it's 40% more likely to respond with facts, which is a problem I personally struggle with as it was hallucinating fake authors and fake facts when trying to summarize my articles or podcast episodes. But how could they go from an already incredible powerful model to this mind-blowing fourth version of their GPT language model set? This is mainly by incorporating even more humans in the training of the new model. Yes, they made it more intelligent by using more humans, more manual work, and more expert human hours. How funny is this? The best way to improve AI is by using more humans. We can easily doubt how intelligent those models really are, being so dependent on human-curated data and training. Still, it has its upsides, since it allows us to have better control on its outputs and capabilities. By the way, if you are enjoying this episode, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. 
I share weekly videos like this one covering exciting approaches in AI. If you are like me and 10 minutes of AI weekly isn't enough, follow my What's AI podcast where we dive deeper into such topics with expert guests. I'm sure you will enjoy these too. OpenAI could make the model even better by collaborating with various companies implementing GPT-4 into their product to gather even more feedback and iteratively improve it. Like Duolingo for better conversational skills or Khan Academy as a student's customized tutor. Just this single use case already makes the model amazing enough to me. Imagine having a personal tutor for any class you are taking. This is an industry game changer. All this help from involving more actual people and more experts and implementing the model in more applications are possible thanks to the training scheme of the model based on reinforcement learning, which is the same used in ChatGPT that you can learn from in my video about it. It is a way of training the model progressively based on feedback we give it. In this case, through human feedback. OpenAI also insists that the most valuable training part is the pre-training they do on pretty much the whole internet, which they then further train and align with what we want to receive using such human feedback we just mentioned. They also highlight the importance of using prompt engineering to receive what we want from the model, something I believe is an important skill to develop for anyone to better use those powerful models. And this is why we are building learnprompting.org along with my friend Sander and Towards AI. You can see this project as a free Wikipedia for talking with AIs. Oh, and not to mention that OpenAI has access to a supercomputer with Microsoft, which greatly help iterate and train this enormous language model faster. Just a small irrelevant detail. They also added a cool new feature called System. System can be used to prescribe a style and tasks to achieve to the model instead of having to add it in the text itself, which will be very useful for people building applications using the API. Just tell it to act like a math professor replying to students not too seriously with some puns and it will do so. It will reenact almost anything you want. Another cool thing with this new OpenAI publication, even though everything about GPT-4 and ChatGPT is proprietary and thus closed access, don't ask me where they got their name from, is that they release their evaluation framework. This means that open source approaches will be able to use it to compare themselves to the new OpenAI model's performances. This can be pretty useful to advance progress, helping compare everyone's approach in a single broad benchmark. Of course, GPT-4 is not perfect, but neither are we. What's cool is that you can ask it to prescribe its reasoning and understand how it got its answer. It still has known limitations shared by other language models that they are still working on, like social biases, hallucinations, and adversarial prompts, where you basically quote-unquote hack the model when sending your instructions to receive something it is not supposed to do like asking to give personal information if the model has access to a company's database, for example. All this to say that you still need to be very careful when using language models like GPT-4 and not trust them blindly. Just act as if it was a Wikipedia page. You can probably trust it, but just double check to be sure when it's an important matter. The main problem is that it looks confident even when creating fake facts. It's pretty much the perfect liar. OpenAI will keep improving the model over time, so if you use it either to ChatGPT Plus or their API, which by the way you can apply now to join the waitlist, you are actually contributing to make it better and safer. Unfortunately, this is pretty much all information we have access to for now, but I invite you to learn more with their technical report and blog post where you can find tons of graphs and statistics on how good GPT-4 is compared to the previous models or just play with it and learn by trial and error, which is lots of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If so, please give it a like if you are on YouTube and let me know what you think of ChatGPT and this new GPT-4 model in the comments below. I'd love to hear about how you use it. It would also be fantastic if you could share this episode with a friend or your favorite group chat to help the channel. Oh, and before we end, I will host an episode related to the GPT language models with an expert soon on my podcast to discuss the different challenges, capabilities, ethical concerns, and more. 
I invite you to check it out and follow it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. I will see you next week with even more AI.